when it comes to jump training in endurance runners, Rodrigo and colleagues conducted a meta-analysis to investigate the effects of jump training on measures of physical fitness and athletic performances in endurance runners. It was concluded that jump training in youth and male and female endurance runners at both recreational and competitive levels may benefit from performing a jump training programme. Improvements in endurance performance are likely through improvements in force generating capabilities and running economy. 21 studies were included in their analysis and based off the results, Rodrigo and colleagues offer recommendations for prescribing jump training for endurance runners. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their recommendations. In terms of the intensity and volume, jump sessions should involve a high or maximal intensity drills, i.e. minimal ground contact time, and should include a combination of plyometric jumps that are both unilateral and bilateral in both horizontal and vertical planes. In terms of jump training volume, it can be prescribed as repetitions, distance or time. However, volume can vary widely depending on the type of drill and individual capabilities. Regarding frequency and duration, jump training sessions as short as five minutes may offer significant benefits to endurance performance. Depending on the volume and intensity of the sessions, four jump training sessions per week over four to 12 weeks is recommended. Moving on to the recovery. Less than 15 seconds between jump efforts appears to be adequate recovery and approximately two minutes of recovery between sets is recommended. However, it is important to highlight that when recovery time is taken between jumps, the reutilization of kinetic energy via the elasticity of the musculotendinous unit is compromised. And regarding the time between jump training sessions, although 24 hours may be adequate after low dose jump training sessions, most studies have used a recovery period of 48 hours or more between jump sessions. And lastly, general recommendations. Interestingly, jump training can be effective even when done in place of a portion of regular endurance training. Therefore, negating the need for additional training time and reducing the risk of excessive loading. However, it should be noted that the runners in the majority of the studies included in the analysis did not have extensive previous experience in jump training. Nevertheless, it's recommended that jump training programs follow a progressive approach to overload, where volume, intensity and the difficulty of the drill is carefully considered. And that concludes the recommendations for implementing jump training for endurance runners. I recommend you check out the full article. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.